Hello and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. It looks like it's time for another one of those vlog style videos where we take a look at what's going on in the shop, look forward to what's going to be happening in the next few months. We've got a little bit of mail to open and some exciting news with regards to video production. At least it's exciting news for me. So let's get into this. Let's start with the mail. This is from Brandon Rapp. And he has a YouTube channel that I will link right up here. And I think you can see the video of what's in this box. But since I haven't opened the box yet, I'm not going to swear to that. But he said he was sending it, so. What we have here is a hook based on the Wheat Twist video, that video that was my first video ever to reach half a million views. In fact, today it's up to something like 570,000 views, still going strong, still my most watched video every day for the last month and a half. And yes, this is a Wheat Twist, but with a little bit different take on it. Instead of a tool handle, he actually made a very nice wall hook out of it. And here is Brandon's wall hook been forged out into a nice taper here and to make it look more like wheat he's given a nice brass wire brushing or bronze brushing gives it that golden ways of grain look I believe is how he put it and he's put a nice little finial on the end here and put a hole in it for a screw and that's going to hang on the wall somewhere here in the shop maybe this is the hook that my apron's going to hang on from now on it's always fun to see projects that folks have completed using the ideas presented here in the video. It's also fun when you see another YouTube blacksmith grab hold of that idea and make something special out of it. For the most part, the things I present here aren't unique. They're not proprietary. They're free for anybody to use however they want to use them. So I love seeing other people learn from these ideas and putting their own particular flavor onto them. This is something I wouldn't have thought of, but it's a great way to use that twist. And it'll be something that I'm going to be glad to have in the shop for many years to come. Now, what else have I been doing in the shop? If you've been paying attention, you probably realized I skipped a few days videos. Last Thursday was mostly about going to town and picking up steel. It was a nice day, it was sunny, the roads were dry. So I got the old beat up pickup truck out, went to the steel yard. I actually ran into one of the viewers while I was at the steel yard. He recognized me walking into the steel yard, said hi. I wish I'd caught his name, but that was really special to know that even in my small part of the world, there are people who are watching the videos and appreciate that. But by the time I went to town, ran all the other errands, got the steel, brought it back, unloaded it, got it all put on the rack, got some set up for the saw to cut, there just wasn't time to make a video that day, so there was no video for Friday morning. Friday morning was kind of a gloomy, foggy day, and on our way out to go to the local coffee shop that morning, we ran across some police activity, and they actually had the end of our road blocked, and they let us out, but it wasn't really convenient for us to come back in, so we went to town again. We spent most of the day in town, came back home. They were all cleaned up. That was all done and out of there. But then a few hours later, I got a call from the camera shop in Colorado Springs and my missing video camera that went in for repairs four months ago, that was December 1st is when I dropped this off, finally came back. It's finally been worked on. They say they didn't find anything wrong with it and all they did was clean it, but we'll see if they made some little adjustments or if cleaning it was all it really needed. Hopefully the color quality and the image quality will be better once we get back to using this camera. I've got the Sony video camera, the FDR AX33, back on the tripod. While that camera was in the shop, we've been using this little Canon M50. And the M50 is really a pretty darn good camera. Any of the problems you've seen in the video with things being out of focus or a little odd color has more to do with me being behind the learning curve on a camera that has a lot more manual settings and that the automatic settings aren't as adaptable to work in the shop. I've always found that this Sony video camera did a pretty good job of staying in focus on what I was working in, but this one didn't like to focus on hot iron, so I spent a lot of time manually focusing and sometimes I didn't get all that right. As a result, there were some spots in some of the videos over the last four months that people found a little hard to watch. Hopefully this will get us back on track. This camera will then go to a second camera so I can get a second shot, second angle, perspective on some of these things and I still have the little Sony video camera, the little action camera 
that we can use as a third camera that really works well behind the power hammer, the treadle hammer, the press, things like that. Great for those tight places and those really unusual shots. So I am hoping that by getting my favorite video camera back, that we'll be able to do some better videos and move forward with a little bit higher video quality from here on out. Now over here on this corner of my welding bench, I used to keep a welding cart that was theoretically a way to take my wire feeder for my gas engine welder and be able to move that around the shop. But I never moved it. It's had here for 10 years. This is also what I thought was the ideal place for the heat treat oven. So I've modified the cart for the heat treat oven so that the little toaster oven, the new heat treat oven, and the old heat treat oven, which is down on the bottom of the cart, now all fit right here where that welding cart used to be. Now my gas cylinders are back here chained to the side of the bench where they're out of the way and my little wire feeder is up here on the bench at least temporarily. I think I'm going to make a wall bracket so I can mount that up on the wall, clean up all this mess and hopefully this will be more efficient. What it really means though is that I don't have to drag the heat treat oven from where I had it stored roll it over here, set it up every time I use it. And the reason I use it here is that there's a door here to my right, there's a door behind me, and I can open these doors up, I can put a fan in one of them, get lots of ventilation if I'm quenching in oil. And since I use oil quench steels most often, I really like to be able to ventilate that smoke out. So I think this is gonna be a much more ideal place to put these things. And yes, I know the light behind me makes it hard to see my face. You're just gonna to have to live with it. Those little lighting issues like glare from a door behind me, glare from the window behind the vise or the welding table are just one of the things that we just have to either accept in this shop or I have to admit that I am changing over slowly from being primarily a blacksmith shop to being primarily a video studio and I'm not sure if I'm ready to do that yet. So until the time that I think it is more important to black out all the windows and put in lots of video lighting to get consistent lighting everywhere because the videos have become more important than the blacksmithing, we're just going to leave it the way it is and we're just going to put up with some of that odd lighting in the videos. It doesn't really affect the content. It just, it just affects a little bit of the production quality and I think most of you don't mind that. Now as far as what we're going to do in the future, I guess I really don't have a lot of those videos planned out. I'm going to continue to take customer orders off my waiting list, which by the way has worked out great. I'm not swamped with orders. The list keeps getting longer and I'm sure the people on the list are chomping at the bit. But it gives me a lot of freedom here in the shop to take orders as I really have the time. And if I need to take a few days off of working on customer orders, to work on rearranging the heat treating ovens and the welding equipment. I have the freedom to do that without worrying about what I may or may not have promised a customer. So that system is working really well. Now, some of you have asked, how can I order something from you? you you've noticed that I've made a hammer for somebody, I've made an ax for somebody or a poker, and some of those people are people who watch the videos. Now, a lot of those people got on the waiting list back in August, and that's why their names are starting to come up on the list, and I'm starting to make those things for them. It's been nearly eight months since some of those people got on the waiting list, so it's not an instant thing, but if you're hoping I'll make you a hammer or a chisel or something like that to use in the blacksmith shop, I'll put a link to that waiting list down in the video description. Sign up on the waiting list. Leave me a little note there describing what it is you want, and when I get to your name, I will contact you and see if you still want it. There's no obligation, so you can be on the waiting list and not have to worry that you might have changed your mind or found a hammer you like better somewhere else. Whatever the case may be, that's just an option for you. The other option is a lot of the things that I make, like the pineapple twist poker we just did the other day, end up on the Etsy shop. So if you keep your eyes on the Etsy shop, a lot of these things we make will end up there. A lot of the projects we did on our countdown to Christmas at the end of last year, I still have. So I'm going to try and get those listed on the Etsy shop in the next week or so. If we're looking for any of that, by all means, check over there. That might be a way that you can not only buy a piece of the work that I've done, but also help support the channel and the videos. But I think that's all I've got for today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos. There are lots of videos with active forging in them. But then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.